chefs of reddit what's one rule of cooking amateurs need to know late af but you're just going to enjoy cooking more if you have a sharp knife no clue how people can hack away at veggies and meat no reason to go insane either a 30 dollars victorian ox and 5 dollar sharpener will get you a very long way please taste what you're cooking before serving it I worked in a kitchen for a year and a line cook always tasted to make sure it was good. Even if he cooked a dish a million times he would. Out for manager had to manage the kitchen for one week. He comes in one day to our cook tasting food and loses his sh Tells the guy to stop stealing company food and that he'll be fired if he does it again. Cook tries to explain why he does it and why it's important. For manager doesn't want to hear any of it. Two days later same manager comes back and complains that a certain dish doesn't taste as good as it did before. It was a no Sherlock moment for that cook and a reason to never let the for manager near the kitchen again. Effin for never knows what's going on in the kitchen. I will say I had four managers at this one place and three of them I always respected the most because if we were getting behind they would throw the apron on over their nice clothes and get in the trenches with us. They were leaders, not bosses. I will always respect that. This one's kind of common sense, but hotter doesn't mean faster turning your burners up to 10 for everything will just lead to smoke and half cooked food with a burned exterior. That being said, a lot of times inexperienced cooks won't let their pan get hot enough. Obviously you need to know how your particular pans work on your particular stove at top. But so many dishes are ruined from the start because people just light a stove, wait 5 seconds, and toss their ingredients in. You will never get a good sear when your ingredients are basically boiling in their own moisture. Get the pan hot, but don't just let it sit there for 10 minutes while you prep. Then add your oil, let it get fast, then toss your food in. A big part of this is because cooking shows tend to put the heat higher. The directors feel as if the sizzling and smoking is more appealing to the viewer. People like Alton Brown, Rachel Ray and Michael Simon have commented on this many times. However, you generally want the heat a couple notches below what you see on their shows. In fact, an episode actually takes several hours to film. The food you're seeing is made by chefs in a separate location. That's why the food doesn't appear burnt. It's made by someone else and repeatedly replaced between takes. Smell is very similar to taste. And if you're not sure about combining various spices, open the bottles and smell them all together. Have a friend that lost his smell from COVID. And now he only recognizes if food is salty, sweet, sour or bitter. Just wait until he gets his sense of smell back and a ton of food smell like ammonia or literal garbage now. Yeah, that's fun. It's been 7 months FFS just let me enjoy peanut butter again. Taste the food. Also don't be afraid to poke and prod at it. I feel like people think the process is sacred and you can't shape flip feel touch things while you cook them. The more you are hands on, the more control you have. This is one of those things that's true in moderation. I grew up stirring and poking at all sorts of things and wondering why my veggies didn't ever get that nice brown color. Enter, letting them sit for literally 3 minutes and leaving everything else the same. Also a huge game changer for nice mushrooms. Salt, pepper and acid will brighten up almost any dish. If an otherwise wonderful dish is just missing something. Add salt, pepper and lemon juice, then reassess. There's a book called Salt Fat Acid Heat that comes highly recommended to amateur cooks. Reading even just the first chapter about salt made a lot of food I cooked immediately better. Because I finally understood salt wasn't just that thing that sat on the dinner table that you applied after the meal was cooked. I've never read it. Based on just the title, I endorse it. I have a container of lemon pepper which is pepper and salt infused with lemon flavor. It actually has more salt than pepper, but I think it's marketed as pepper because a lot of home cooks avoid salt, to the detriment of flavor. I have relatives who refuse to add any salt at all to their dish, but they use lemon pepper because they don't read the content label and treat the spice as a magic flavor enhancer. It's not that magic. I watched a Gordon Ramsay show where he said if it's brown, it's cooked, if it's black, it's seffed. He was right. Tell people you're behind them when cooking is involved. Behind. Carrying a hot pot behind someone. Hot behind. Believe it or not we used to shout exactly this. A lot of the time when people add salt to a dish because they think it tastes flat, what it really needs is an acid like lemon juice or vinegar. Is there a certain golden rule to follow when to add the acid? Yes. Or tomatoes. 
they're pretty acidic too and go with so many things. Our dinners are so much better once the garden tomatoes are ripe, or if a dish is too acidic, oil butter or a little sugar can help add balance to it, like tomato and eggs. Every Chinese mom makes those slightly differently and I haven't had a tomato egg dish I didn't like yet. Don't use wet towels, learn there the hard way, oof yeah. I didn't realize a pot holder was wet until I had the pan halfway out of the oven once, burned the palm of my hand all the way across and nursed the blister for a week. Be careful where you place them. Not a chef, but no sharps left in the sink. My mom, god bless her, was always bad at this. I had to drive my dad to the hospital on Christmas to get stitched up after plunging into the sink to do dishes only to grab the blade of the carving knife. She doesn't do it anymore. And then there's my mother who dropped a knife into the sink when the garbage disposal was running and tried to catch it. Yeah pretty much everything went wrong. It fell handle first into the disposal and started spinning right as her hand got close to it and it sliced her chunk off her knuckle. Learn how to properly store all ingredients in a fridge. Raw chicken on bottom. Understand times and temps. It's possible to stack times and ingredients so that your food is done at the same time. Drink heavily and get an act or two of a pig or tomato, or no one will take you seriously. Preheat your pan. It's a simple trick but it will improve your cooking. A small amount of oil will go a long long way, when you take steak or pork or lamb off of the heat or out of the oven. Always give it time to rest, usually half the amount of time you cook them, and I tend to loosely cover them in tin foil. Don't choose this as a career if you want a social life. I've seen so many talented people drop the job because they don't get to spend time with their friends and family. People plan gatherings and parties at the times restaurants are busiest, so you could end up cooking for the people you know but not getting to interact with them. Friends of over 10 years still don't get this part of kitchen life. Always missing non-work friends events. Work is your social life. This is one of the things about the industry I both love and hate. It hurts how true I know this. My dad is a head chef and a damn good one at that. My entire life until 12 years old was practically devoid of a father figure. He was never home. Our Christmas day was on the 26th and it was the one day I got to look forward to. Not for the presents or the food or the whatever else. But it's the day I got to properly see and speak to my dad. Where I could go in the back garden and kick a football around or play catch or just sit and talk. My dad's job was what kept our life moving due to us being less well off than others, but caused my mum to become so lonely and depressed at her own life. Loving someone who seemingly was never able to be around, getting home when she was asleep and leaving the house before she was awake caused her to break down. They eventually separated because of it. I despised my mum for separating with my dad because he became my icon, someone who I know now doesn't live up to my expectations cause he's human. And despite never being home, I gave him such an adoration and respect. It hurt my mum and him even more. There is a happy end to the story though. My dad moved and got a job working at a school as a caterer. He's said many times that I isn't as flattering and doesn't pay nearly as much and the work I isn't the challenge he wanted when he decided cooking as his career. But his hours are 8-4 and he can spend time with his now fiancé. He can see me and my sister and, if I had to be honest, my parents separating was the best thing that has ever happened to my family, until COVID. My sister and I saw him every two weeks, spending every other weekend at his place, and now after COVID, while we see him less, we've decided instead to go do some fun things. We've seen Bletchley Park, gone on long hiking walks and been to zoos, all sorts of things. My relationship with my mum is also great. She got a new partner as well. There is a moral to this story though. It will hurt you and the people around you if you become good in the industry. You'll make good money but as Vota Marvel said, you won't have a social life. Stay by the stove. Not really a cooking tip, but a law of the kitchen. A falling knife has no handle. I'm always so proud of my reflexes for not kicking in when I fumble a knife. If I drop anything else, my stupid hands are all over themselves trying to catch it and often failing, but with a knife the hardwired automatic reaction is jump back immediately. Fingers out of the way, feet out of the way, everything out of the way, good looking out, cerebellum. Speaking of kicking in, on first full time cooking job I had a knife spin and fall off the counter, my, stupid, reflex was to put my foot under it like a damn hacky sack to keep it from hitting the ground, 
went through the shoe, somehow between my toes, into the sole somehow without cutting me. Lessons learned. 1. Let it fall. 2. Never set a knife down close to the edge or with the handle sticking out. 3. Hacky sack is not nearly as cool as it could be. Similarly, never put out a grease or oil fire with water, smother with a lid or dump baking soda in there. Do not use flour, as it can combust in the air making things worse. You can always add, but you cannot take away. I find people's problems usually are they are too scared to add rather than they add too much. I heard putting potatoes into a pot that is too salted can help take away some of the salt from my mother, but I have no idea if that is true or not. A dude told me that they did an experiment with this measuring like the electric potential of the water or whatever, and it showed no difference before and after potatation. I've put lots of potatoes in lots of pots but your mom is as salty as ever. I'd call that one debunked. When you grab a pair of tongs, click them a few times to make sure they are tongs. People really overlook this one. You've got a tong the tongs a minimum of 3 times to make sure they tong, or else it can ruin the whole dish. Really think about what size you're cutting your vegetables in relation to cook time. It's better to have a perfectly cooked larger vegetable that you have to use fork and knife a bit to eat at the table than a bunch of overcooked, mushy bite sized pieces. Generally speaking, the best simple preparation of cooking a vegetable is usually roasted on a sheet pan with olive oil. S&P, and for God's sakes, make your own salad dressings fresh, it takes no time, you likely have what you already need in your pantry and it tastes 10x as good as the crap in the bottle, you'll be surprised even how much better ranch dressing tastes if you get the dry seasoning packets and mix it with some fresh milk and mayo and let it set for 30 minutes in the refrigerator. Never ever ever throw water on a grease fire, don't try moving it either, turn off the heat. Place a lid on it or smother it with baking soda, if you don't have a fire extinguisher. Also, consider buying a fire extinguisher if you don't already have one. Patience, planning, and good organization. Patience planning. Brine your chicken. Let the rice dry before you make fried rice. Slow cook your meats. Overall the actual time you invest is about the same but it requires some foresight. Don't expect to just grab a chicken breast out of freezer and be able to make a delicious meal in 20 minutes. A lot of the best dishes take some time to let the flavors do their work. Organization. It's a lot more enjoyable when you can focus on cooking instead of digging around for things you need or clearing space on your counter. Have a good set of glass Tupperware to save leftovers. Get stackable matching cookware that's easy to manage and store. Ziploc bags are great too. These things pay for themselves in giving you general sanity and making it more likely you will consume your leftovers and always have things in their place. Keep it simple. I see so many young chefs coming into the kitchen fresh out of the classroom going hell for leather to make some strange gels. Jellies. Dehydrated this and that. Yes it can taste great. But just chill out. Show me if you can make a proper just. Properly cook a joint of meat. Know how to bring the best out of a simple. Humble vegetable. Just keep it simple. P.S. Salt, acid, fat, in the right balance can go a f n long way. P.P.S. Watch out for that f-ing mandolin. It will take no prisoners. R.I.P.P. Rest in peace pinky. Knife resistant gloves. I bought a pair for $6 from a restaurant supply store. Then bought another pair. I keep them wrapped around the mandolin with a rubber band. So much easier to do fast work on a mandolin when you don't have to worry about accidentally shredding your hand. Clean as you go. Done with the cutting board, wash it or put it away before you move on to the next step. A clean kitchen makes your life way easier. I learned to cook like this since I started living on my own at 17 yo. I'm 29. And my apartment was so small I didn't have space to be messy. Now, in my current home we have a big kitchen. So when I finish cooking the kitchen is almost clean. But for my GF, it's her first time living on its her own. One year. And when she cooks, oh god. Kitchen looks like Vietnam. I get an anxiety attack every time. But for my GF, it's her first time living on its own. As long as she doesn't know your Reddit account you're safe. Not a chef but I'm having a beer with one. I posed this question to him and he said. You know the knob on the stove that makes the fire come out? There's a whole range of settings between off and all the way on. Temperature control grabs my shoulder temperature. Control. I've had the great fortune of knowing some pro cooks in my life. 
and the most memorable piece of advice I've gotten was when there were several of them at my place during a housewarming and they had, of course, taken over the kitchen. One was searing a pork loin and was pissy because I had a liquor dispenser top on my olive oil and just a grinder for salt, no pig. After he ripped the top off the oil and found my box of kosher salt, he explained, Dirty Mick, do you know why restaurant food tastes so good? He asked, while liberally dumping oil and salt on the pork. It's because we cook like we hate you. Turns out the best home cooking aid is self-loathing. If you put a lot of effort into making a meal for your loved ones and something doesn't come out the way you hoped for, don't be and complain and apologize for it when everyone is eating. Otherwise a crappy dish turns into a crappy experience for all. I hate it when people do this. I'm usually enjoying the meal that's apparently imperfect. And occasionally I'll start to notice the slight dryness they're apologizing profusely about or whatever. It was better before they said anything. Not to mention the conversation. I've also found that food tastes better when other people cook it. I think when you make it yourself, you are immersed in the smells and flavors while making it so much that it becomes a bit boring or the smell flavor fades over time. Also you're so aware of the mistakes and imperfections in the meal, the alteration you had to make to save it from disaster, that no one else knows about. So it's good to step away from the kitchen for a bit between making and serving, drink some wine, and distance yourself from the dish for a few minutes at least. Then you'll probably enjoy it as much as your family guests. Never fry. Sauté etc nude. It's only sexy until the spatter. Yep. You only cook bacon naked once. Don't effing ruin your pans for Christ's sake. I've seen so many instances of people talking about how non-stick doesn't work. It goes away a week after you buy the pans when in reality they are treating the things like cast iron and using every metal utensil they can find on it. That said, non-stick pans don't last forever, no matter how careful you are. For this reason it's probably not worth buying a very expensive one. But don't go for the cheapest option either. Not a prof chef mashed potatoes. Not blended potatoes. Don't ever put potatoes in the blender. It will turn into glue. For anyone wondering the science behind it, potatoes contain a lot of starch. Mashing cooked potatoes gently by hand or with a ricer leaves most of the starch molecules intact. The butter and airy you add to the mashed potatoes are able to coat each individual particle, making the potatoes creamy. I didn't know people did this. I just used a fork until I had a proper potato masher. You are the smart one. I learned the hard way and I was watching Hell's Kitchen one day and saw one person do this. And my heart sank for the person. Yes Gordon called the person dum dum sandwich. Not a chef but worked as a dishwasher. Do not try to put out burning oil with water. Try to cover the pan so the fire loses oxygen. Where it all had to hide the rat. Honestly, that movie taught me the connection between smell and taste. It legitimately bumped up my cooking skills after watching it. And with those skills, I got excited and would just create shout of nowhere. Like, why not thin slice potatoes? Fry them in a pan. Grab a random spice. Throw it in and just smell my way through whatever would complement that smell. It was glorious. I could walk into any kitchen and just make a random dish with random ingredients. It was exciting. I loved it. A few years on, I'm a bit more tired after work but when the pantry is low and the next day is grocery day, I'll still give it a good try. Not a chef but avid BBQ smoker. Let your meat rest after cooking. I thought avid smoker meant allowing meat to rest gave you an opportunity to go have a smoke. I'm not going to be able to hold myself to one rule. Sorry not sorry, mise en place. It's French for putting in place or something like that. It means before you start the actual cooking, get everything you'll need for the whole recipe out on the counter. Do all your prep work, measuring amounts, chopping onions, peeling potatoes, seasoning meat, greasing pans, whatever the recipe says, and put it all within arm's reach of where you'll be cooking. As you become more experienced, you'll get a feel for what can wait to be done during downtime mid-cooking. But even then mise is just less of a hassle. Don't rely on a single recipe. If you want to try to make something you had at a restaurant and google chicken ala whatever, don't just randomly pick one of the results to try. Read a few of them and cook the one that comes closest to being the average of all the others. Way too many internet recipes aren't actually tested by their authors. 
and professionals are actually worse than amateurs about it they're used to eyeballing measurements because they know what the right amount looks like and when they write it down it's all guesswork fat salt sour butter if it's bland add some fat if it's still bland add some salt if it's still bland add some vinegar or lemon juice if it's still bland add some herbs and spices or green vegetables this is even something you can do late in the cooking process to fix a recipe that's turning out boring just remember that a little goes a long way also there are magic ingredients that combine several of these at once for example olive oil is very fatty and slightly bitter cheese is very fatty moderately salty and slightly sour soy sauce is very salty and slightly bitter citrus zest is very bitter and moderately sour measure by weight not volume this is more for baking than cooking baking is very sensitive to small changes in the ratio of different ingredients and you'll have a lot easier time getting it right if you use a scale flour is especially problematic if you scoop up a cup of freshly sifted flour and level it off so you have exactly a cup then spend a couple of minutes lightly tapping it on the countertop and shaking it from side to side it'll settle and pack more tightly and the exact same amount of flour will only take up three quarters of a cup don't play that game just weigh it and be done if a recipe says one cup of flour use 130 grams bonus Weighing stuff means you don't have to wash a bunch of funny shaped measuring cups and spoons. The herbs thing. As a very very amateur cook I started just randomly throwing an assessment of herbs into my tomato sauce and suddenly it tasted a million times better. Just don't chop up bay leaves. Is there anything that doesn't taste better with marjoram? Agree with weighing stuff when baking. It's more like science than art. I have cups and spoons for measuring but I only use them for liquids. As European where amounts of ingredients are always provided in grams or ml for fluids i am slightly confused but then i remember seeing cups in american recipes and am also confused but in a different way taste everything you don't need to buy pre-made spice rubs look at the ingredients and build a well-stocked pantry celebrity endorse cookware isn't always good a lot of it sucks don't cheap out on knives buy forged not stamped store or meat accordingly don't cross contaminate your fridge knife magnet strips are better than knife blocks this is obvious but never put a cast iron in the dishwasher don't boil the shout of potatoes to make mash rinse raw ice before cooking please n place when a dish calls for a certain amount of wine it is recommended to consume an equal amount of wine whilst cooking said dish I'm gonna make beef borgwignon for the whole extended family and get faced in the process then. E I don't speak French. D accord. Ah yes. I to remember the I cook with wine. Sometimes I even add it to the food plaque in my grandmother's kitchen. I was watching a cooking show where the guy opened a bottle of wine took a big drink then poured a small amount onto the duck he was cooking and said the duck was thirsty too and chuckled into the camera. I always thought I was a good cook but now reading through this all my self confidence is shattered. Keep your kitchen organized, your workspace clean, and mise en place everything before you get started. You don't want to get halfway into a recipe and not be able to find, or worse, find out you don't have or have enough of, a certain ingredient. No one want their steak on a cast iron, just cooking away, getting overdone and tough. While they're searching for rosemary, good prep makes great food. Not a chef, but a very experienced home cook. Sharpen your knives. They will be more efficient and a dull knife is more dangerous than a sharp one. The difference in efficiency is astounding. Seriously, a mildly dull knife can immediately turn a tomato into a finger slicing hazard. A tip my mom would often give me. Don't go for cheap store bought cooking wine. Buying the real stuff adds much more flavor to the dish. Scrambled eggs, low and slow. Always salt your pasta water, like the ocean, not the Dead Sea. D. Cooking is art, baking is science, 